Brian Flores and David Cudley are the latest black coaches to get the ax in the NFL. Never in the story. We see this shit. You know, once upon a time, they didn't even get a chance to have the job. Now you might get a chance, and then you, shit, you, your ass better fucking go win a Super Bowl real quick. Which of, which of course, that shit ain't finna happen. Brian Flores led the Dolphins to a nine and eight season. They won eight of their last nine games. Looked like they were a team that was ascending, gelling. Got a young quarterback. They said, fuck it. David Cully led the Texans to a 4-13 and season. Uh, and that's without three-time Pro Bowl quarterback Deshaun Watson taking a snap. Y'all know what Deshaun got going on over there. So Cully got a one-and-done one and uh, opportunity and gone. But this shit is nothing new like. Any position in sports, anything in this country, really, when it comes down to can a black man or woman think, can you use this right here, still in 2022, we are doubted. Don't be fooled and say, well, what about the quarterback position? No, I don't want to hear that shit. You look at the black quarterbacks in the league right now and you tell me which one that people are praising them for uh, uh, their headiness. I hear how smart Aaron Rodgers is. And Aaron Rodgers is a smart quarterback. Smart quarterback. Uh, he's revealed now. And the other shit, not so much. We are smart Tom Brady is. We always heard how smart Peyton Manning is. Uh, or oh, um, Drew Brees. All these motherfuckers. How often do you hear... How smart Patrick Mahomes is. You hear about his rocket arm. You hear about Lamar Jackson's athleticism. You hear about Kyler Murray's athleticism. You know what I'm talking about? So, yeah, these guys are getting gigs now at the quarterback position, but still it's like it's just because of your athleticism. It ain't about oh, you, you can read coverages and shit like that. That's why I like when Jalen Hurts had to read a motherfucker that was trying to question him about some shit. And he broke that shit all the way down. What he was seeing on the field and what he's been taught to do, how to handle that coverage, it was beautiful. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. I loved it. Because when it comes to things which we are, uh, the task is to think, still, it is thought that we can't do it. Also, the thought is, that if you give these black men these coaching jobs, who the fuck the fan base is going to relate to? Who they going to relate to? Okay? Still, yes, the uh, the NFL, 70% black. You look at that whole defense be black. Wide receiver black. Uh, uh, running backs black. So you got all that but in those stands, it's mostly white folks. So who the who the paying customer gonna identify with? Got to get them some. Give them the coach. They do the same thing in the NBA. I know the NBA got more black coaches, but the NBA the NBA's fan base is more liberal than the NFL's fan base. Okay. The NBA, listen to the music and shit. Like when you watch the NBA game, listen to the music they play. A lot of hip hop and shit like that. Versus NFL, a lot of country music, rock and roll and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Then they 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 dive off into some. They trying to partner with Hove and shit. Now Jay Jay Z, they trying to partner with the Hove and try to get hip and all that kind of stuff. No folks ain't trying to say that shit. You see how they did Kaepernick. You see who they catered to. This ain't nothing new though. You can go back in the gap to the legendary sportsman Jimmy the Greek. Okay? Back in the gap. They had a brother by the name of Jimmy the Greek who got himself in all kind of shit. Got fired. He used to be the man, one of the guys in sports media. Okay? You would come to Jimmy the Greek, you know what I'm saying, for, for your picks. 
He can help you win some money. Jimmy, get, Jimmy the Greek got his ass fired because uh, they asked him, ooh, they, it's crazy, ain't it? Dr. King Day. Uh, they asked him about Dr. King Day and how things have changed for the black athlete. You know what I'm talking about? And uh, Jimmy the Greek went to talking about how black athletes are better than white athletes because uh, the black man was bred to be physically strong. Okay. Now, that part about the breeding, that has some truth to it. Okay. If you read, you know, again, I'm a, a student of history now. Well, I'm a history teacher. I'm a fucking scholar. Currently reading the 1619 Project right now. You motherfuckers treated our people like we were fucking cattle or some shit. We were less than human. Bitch ass motherfuckers. Uh, so some of that did happen. Is, is that why black people are uh, excel in sports? Probably not. Because if that's the case, then you would have to say, uh, what about Hakeem, Eli Hakeem Olajuwon, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, you know what I'm saying? All these motherfuckers that come over there from Africa, the, the folks that dominate uh, distance running. That's from, from Kenya and shit. You know what I'm talking about? Like, what about those folks who don't, who weren't enslaved and weren't bred and shit like that? So that shit don't add up. You know what I'm saying? But he said that. But he also said about coaching. When he was asked about black people getting into culture, he said basically black folks are taking over sports. And if you take coaching from the white man, what are they left with? He was just telling the truth. He he was saying what he had talked about with his colleagues behind closed door. That the white fan base wants to have something that they can relate to. They ain't gonna come out and say that. Of course, motherfuckers ain't gonna come out and say that. I mean, the team's not gonna come out and say that. You might get some fans to be real enough and say that shit. But the team's not gonna say that. Okay? They gotta have somebody on their sideline that plays to that sense of, oh, I can relate to him. He looked like me. Or plays to that white supremacy bullshit. Because, yeah, they all out on the field. They doing this. Oh, but the guy who over there telling them what to do is like me. The boss is like me. The workers, yeah, so ain't nothing changed. Yeah, they're millionaires or whatever, but they're still the workers and he's the boss. So that dynamic, a lot of motherfuckers want to still have that dynamic in play. Okay? Shit ain't gone nowhere. Shit ain't gone nowhere. You had another motherfucker who was in uh sports media back in the gap named Al Campanis. Uh he was being asked about uh black men becoming managers of major league baseball. And at first he gave like a bullshit answer in the in the uh the interview, I think, was like Ted Koppel, legendary uh, anchor. Knew the man was bullshit on his ass. So he, he pressed him. And Al Campanis went ahead and said what was on his mind. He said, basically, uh, uh, he thought bl black people lacked some of the ne necessities to be managers. Basically saying we can't think. Basically saying we can't think. So I got two things to say about this. One, for you real ones out there, make sure that you are stressing to your kid that may be in sports, really across the board, but this is a sports show. Stress to them about thinking the game 
And then no matter what you're able to do physically, you still got something to prove to these motherfuckers about your mental capability. Be a student of the game. Prove these some bitches wrong. You understand me? Prove them wrong. Master the ins and outs of this shit. If your ass playing football, master the coverages. Master all the fucking positions. I don't care what position you play. Master the game. And add that to your physical prowess. And be legendary. Be legendary. You will surpass Tom Brady. All these motherfuckers on Tom Brady dick. Watch, watch the son bitch that can uh, uh read the game just like he does, but got that escapability in that arm. Pat Mahomes got a chance to be the GOAT. But I hope he understands this dynamic. And yeah, he's uh, uh biracial and shit like that, but in this country, come on now, you know what that is. One drop rule, they say, right? Study the game. Prove these motherfuckers wrong. Secondly, if we want this shit to stop, it's going to have to come to the players. 70% of the NFL, black. Y'all withhold y'all labor, can make some shit move. They can bring in replacement players. They can try that. Or with these black billionaires we got now, got we got these these stadiums on these HBCU campuses. What happens if y'all threaten to take y'all game and say we're gonna start our own league and go over here and we're gonna play our, our schedule throughout the country on HBCU campuses? The infrastructure is already there. You get Oprah. Hove, Tyler Perry, all these motherfuckers, Jordan, all these motherfuckers did big money. Make a lead. The best black players say, until y'all motherfuckers do right, we over here, dog. Y'all want to get right? We'll be back. We, we can do business. We can do business if y'all want to get right. And when I say get right, I don't mean keeping no trash black coach. I don't mean hiring no trash black coach. Just be fair. That would you claim? David Culler getting one and done when he didn't have his starting quarterback? The fuck is that, man? Brian Flores winning eight of his last nine games, uh, having a nine and eight season in a year where you uh, – was that the expectation in, in a division where you got the Bills, who got a, 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 a good, if not great, quarterback and got the number one scoring defense in the league? With the Patriots, got the number two scoring defense in the league and arguably the GOAT coach? They had to win the season in that division. That's bullshit, dog. But it ain't going to stop until the players, these rich ass black men, Decide to say we're powerful. We can do this. It's still a gate. We still can get money. Break off, make our own shit. Unless they don't want to do right. Motherfucker gonna show up to the game. We're gonna show up to the game. We're gonna watch the game. Shit. Same shit I was trying to say to the NBA players. After George Floyd's murder, they had a chance to make some real change. I told him not to play. Adam, on Twitter and Instagram, don't play until the owners, the owners of your teams pledge to use their uh, power to force real change, get us a voting rights bill, get us a, a police reform bill, get some motherfucking reparations for slavery and segregation. They ain't do it. They ain't use the power. Ain't nothing gonna change till we fucking change. Otherwise, we just crying and complaining, bitching and moaning. And then it's gonna blow over. 
until the bullshit happened again. Do something. Do something. And prove these motherfuckers wrong. Put it on some. My kids wanted me to tell y'all to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me across all social media platforms. Like the videos and share them. Did I forget anything? And turn on the post notifications. Y'all heard them. And also, visit Statement Tees, LLC.com and shop with us. That's Statement Tees. Every t-shirt you wear makes a statement.